Hi, I'm David Davis from Actual Tech Media. We're here at the headquarters of Citus Data. I'm joined by the founder and CTO, Mr. Azgun Erdogan. How you doing, Azgun? Good, good. How about you? I'm doing great. So, you know, I've learned that Citus is a database. Mm -hmm. It's open source and it transforms Postgres to be a distributed database solution. Is that right? Yes, that's right. All right. So now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the architecture of Citus. So tell us what this diagram is here. Yep, and this is a simplified architecture diagram. It basically shows uh, a distributed database where we have database nodes in the cluster. There are many of them. And then the, the simplified, uh, basically, application flow. So here we have a coordinator node. The application talks to the coordinator node. The coordinator node doesn't do any work. It just delegates work to the other machines in here. OK. And basically, to the application and to the end user, it appears just like a single node PostgreSQL database, which, in fact, it is. But behind the covers, what we do for the application and the end user is we shard the database into smaller bits and pieces. When you send a query, you think you're talking to PostgreSQL, but behind the covers, we parallelize that work or we route that work. So when you send a query, we take it, we break it up into smaller pieces, everyone does their work, we merge the results and we give it back to the application. Okay, wow. So if I just used Postgres by itself without Citus data, what would this diagram look like? Differently, I think in uh, one thing is you'd probably have just one of these nodes uh, because PostgreSQL scales up, but it doesn't scale out today. And basically here we sharded the data that's invisible to you, but instead of this sharding, you'd have big tables. Let's say if you have a ta uh, database table that's two terabytes in size, that would be just one big box in here. Uh, and you'd uh, make that database scale to a certain point by adding more hardware, more hardware, but then it wouldn't grow beyond that, uh, like, how much uh, hardware you can get. Okay. Yeah. And the extensibility of PostgreSQL, is that what makes kind of Citus possible? That's true, both possible and also unique in a certain way, uh, in the sense that if you were building a distributed database before, or if you were building a new database that had certain functionality before, you'd basically take, uh, you had two approaches, like two ways to do it. One is you take a database, PostgreSQL, for example, and you fork it. I think one example of that, a popular example of that is Redshift, which is a fork of PostgreSQL as of 10 years ago. But obviously when you fork, what happens is you start diverging from the community, which is the actual code base and also the tooling built around that database. And it effectively becomes its own separate different database. But that's one of the ways you could go. The other way is you can say, hey, uh, I want to build this thing from scratch myself. Like, and I'm going to build all the components, the transaction engine, the configuration engine, and then you'd spend all of that effort uh, to build the database. And PostgreSQL has been in development for over 20 years, so you'd have to build all of that functionality, yeah. but also all the tooling around PostgreSQL. Uh, what we did at Citus, which is a new concept in uh, databases actually, is as of PostgreSQL 9.1, uh, Postgres released the extension APIs. And uh, what these are is they give you a way to extend the database mm -hmm. without forking uh, from the project. And we took over those APIs and now we use them in Citus to turn PostgreSQL into a distributed database. Very cool. And what types of companies or what types of applications mm -hmm. require this sort of distributed database? Uh, different types, uh, and it really depends. I'll share a few examples. Uh, in practice, companies who have lots of data or who need a lot of performance from their underlying database, just across the board. Yeah. Now, if you look into the example applications here, uh, we find a lot of SaaS applications who are growing and who need to scale. Uh, Copper is, for example, one of them. Uh, basically, they reach a certain point and a single machine isn't enough for them. So SaaS applications are uh, typical customers uh, of Citus. Another uh, application type that we see is what we call real-time analytics, mm -hmm. where you need to ingest large volumes of data into your cluster and analyze that data in real time. Okay. Example, customers who use Citus that way, Algolia is one of them, where they're ingesting uh, lots of data into the cluster and looking at that. Uh, one of our users, uh, Microsoft, uses Citus uh, really? in this way, yeah, where they're uh, getting in a lot of uh, events data uh, from Windows devices, and then uh, they ingest that data in real time, and then they analyze that data in real time. Uh, so real-time ap uh, analytical applications are another uh, example application. Okay. And if I wanted to get started with Citus, and I mean, I'm curious about this diagram in particular, how it's, how it's architected. 
I mean, does this run on premises? Does it run in the cloud? Does it run in your you know, database as a service solution? All three, actually. You can take it, you can download it. It's open source, it's available. You can deploy it on your own on-prem or private cloud infrastructure. Uh, you can deploy it again on AWS, uh, on EC2 instances uh, yourself, or uh, we have our many service offering that provides it like everything, all the setup and high availability disaster recovery features so you can use our uh, managed database service offering. Very nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this overview of the Citus data architecture. For more information, visit citusdata.com. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.